Praise the Lord this morning. Amen. Yes. My name is Esther Kanyi. Christ and I, we are friends. I love him. He saved me and he has sustained me. Today we are glad, we are grateful to God. We give thanks to him for his blessings and for giving us chance to be, to be in this day. Today we are celebrating our Women's Guild Week. And today is the climax of the day. And we thank God for everything. Welcome all to our day. And I'm going to invite our sister Jane to read us with a chorus and prayers. God bless you. Welcome. <laughs> Waweza yote hakuna mungu kama we wewe ni mungu mku wewe ni mungu mku waweza yote hakuna mungu kama we 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 ni mugu we we ni mugu mku waweza yote hakuna mungu kama we 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 ni mugu we we ni mugu mku waweza Yote hakuna mungu kama wewe. Baba katika jina kule Yesu Kristo, tunakuabudu, tunakuimidi, tunakiria kwaba unastahiri. Hakuna mungu alia kama wewe Jehovah. 
kwako umetukuka juu biguni hata hapa ulimweguni bwana tunasema hakuna aliye kama wewe siba wa yuda ni asanti bwana ni kwa sababu ya kutuleta katika kikao hiki na ili mfalme tukaendelea kulihimidi na hata kuliinua jina lako bwana Asubuhi ya leo Bwana tunapokuja mbele zako mfalme tunaugama dhabi zetu mbele zako Jehovah the bible says everlasting lord yakoba tunaposema hatuna dhabi tunakufanya mfalme usikuwe mwaminifu na diposa tunaugama dhabi zetu Bwana tunaomba Jehovah ukawese kutunasamehe dhabi na makosa mfalme Jehovah peleleza mioyo yetu peleleza nia zetu mfalme na ili bwana ukawese kututakasa na ili tukawese kukubalika bere zako katika china kura Yesu Kristo ni asanti Jehova unastahili hakuna aliye kama wewe baba asubuhi ya leo mfalme uishie milele tunakuinua ni kwa sababu ya familia zetu ni asanti ni kwa sababu ya ubali huu umetuleta bwana asanti ni kwa sababu ya kanisa lako mfalme tunakush Shukuru tunakuinua hata ni kwa sababu ya nchi yetu mfalme uishie milele Jehova ukawese kuchukua nafasi iliyo yako na ili bwana ukawese kujihidhirisha kama mugu mkuu mfalme uishie milele ni asanti Jehova ni kwa sababu unastahili Mungu wetu tunapokuja mbele zako bwana tunajua ya kwamba shetani hafurahiagi na kasi yako na diposa tunakuja kinyume na kasi yote haibu birisi na tunamtangazia kwamba ameshindwa na ako chini ya nyayo zetu katika jina kura Yesu Kristo tunapoendelea na ibada bwana tunaomba ukawese kutamaraki tamaraki Jehova endelea kuwa pamoja nasi mfalme tunaomba uwepo roho wako mtakatifu akawese kutuogosa akawese kutuogosa katika jina kura Yesu Kristo ni asanti bwana We surrender totally and completely unto you Jehovah Lord. Na diposa ukawese kututumia kadi na mapenzi yako. Na ni katika jina la Yesu Kristo tunaomba na hata kuamini. Amen. Baba yetu uliye biguni jina lako litukuzwe, ufalme wako na uje, mapenzi yako yatimiswe hapa duniani kama huko biguni, utupe leo riziki yetu, utusamehe makosa yetu kama nasi tunavyowasamehe walio tukosea. Ustutie majaribuni lakini utuokoe na yule mwofu kwa kuwa ufalme ni wako na gufu na utukufu sasa na hata milele amina Praise God Let's have our elder patron Virginia Wamagondu to officially welcome all the viewers Welcome elder Good morning viewers Good morning Yeah, I greet you all in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. And I welcome you into this service today. Courtesy of the Women's Guild when we are observing our week, the climax of our week like our leader has said. We are delighted that we have had an opportunity to fellowship with you in the comfort of your own homes and even with your families wherever you are. We are thankful to God even for the new things that we are running and even for the new ways of doing things in these difficult times. Eh? It's our prayer that you will be blessed even as we continue. Karibuni. Thank you, our elder patron. God bless you also. Let's have our chair ready. Naomi Matilo to give us a short report on the guild. Welcome to RD. Praise God. Uh, receive Christian greetings this morning. I welcome all, all those of you who are here and all those viewing us from home. Uh, this year's Guild Week is quite different from the previous years because of the COVID-19 pandemic. And the few who are here today 
represents many, many women at home because uh, we are adhering to the Ministry of Health, Health Directive. However, we remain focused and confident because God has assured us success in Romans, in the book of Romans chapter 8 and verse 28. Our theme this year comes from the book of Deuteronomy chapter 8 and verse 11, uh, which says, forget not the Lord your God. Uh, this year, uh, we have achieved, we, we had a, a whole week, a busy whole week, and we achieved the following. Uh, God enabled us, despite the pandemic, to identify and help needy families in the parish. We did the acts of mercy at individual level. We did the planting of trees at home and even in, the, in our church. Uh, we had a time to pray and fast because of the many issues that are happening in the world. Uh, we have interacted with our family members and we have talked with them the word of God. And these are just a, a few activities among many. The challenges. We have ex experienced challenges along our line of duties, but they have taught us a lot in terms of using technology so as to achieve. And the way, and the way forward, uh, we are advising all ladies to embrace the technology so as to facilitate achievement of our duties. And with that in mind, please visit our church web website for a full report after this. And I urge you to stay safe, observe the Ministry of Health Rules and Regulations as we wait for God to do miracles and to, do, and to heal our land. God bless you and welcome to the surface today. Thank you. God bless you, our chair reading, and thanks for guiding us. Uh, now we are going to have our Bible readings. The first one will come from the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 11 to 20, and the second from James, chapter 4, verse 1 up to 10. It will be read by Esther Murithi and Nancy Karibuni. Praise God. Uh, I'm going to take through the first reading from the book of Deuteronomy 8, from verse 11 to 20. Be careful that you do not forget the Lord your God, failing to observe his command, his laws, and his decrees that I am giving you this day. Otherwise, when you eat and are satisfied, when you build fine houses, and settle down. And when you had the flocks grow large and your silver and gold increase and all you have multiplied, then your heart will become proud and you will forget the Lord your God who brought you out of Egypt, out of the land of slavery. He led you through the vast and dreadful desert. desert that dusty and waterless land, with its venerous snakes and scorpions and scorpions. He brought you water out of hard rock. He gave you manna to eat in the desert, something your fathers had never known. You humbled and to test you so that in the end it might go well with you. You may say to yourself, my power and strength of of my heart have produced this wealth for me. But remember the Lord your God, for it is who gives you the ability to produce wealth and confirms his covenant, which he saw to your forefathers as it is today. 19. If you, never, if you ever forget the Lord your God and follow other gods and worship and bow down to them, I testify against you today that you will surely 
be destroyed. Like the nation the Lord destroyed before you, so you will be destroyed for not obeying the Lord your God. May God bless his word and stay safe. Amesta Jerry Moridi. Praise God. I'm Nancy Kenwa. I'm saved this morning. I'm going to do the second reading, from, which is coming from the book of James, chapter 4, starting from verse 1 to 10. And here it says, What causes fights and quarrels among you? Don't they come from you, from your desires that debatte within you? You want something, but don't get it. You kill and covet, but you cannot have what you want. You quarrel and fight. You do not have because you do not ask God. When you ask, when you ask, you do not receive, because you ask with wrong motives, that you may spread what you get on your precious. You are the trust people. Don't you know that friendship with the world is hatred toward God? Anyone who chooses to be afraid of the world becomes an enemy of God. Or do you think scripture says without reason that the spirit he caused to live in us envies intensely, but he gives us more grace? That is why scripture says God opposes the proud but gives grace to the humble. Submit yourselves then to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. Come near to God and he will come near to you. Wash your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. Grieve, mourn, and wail. Shed your laughter to mourning, and your joy to groom. First ten, and the last one. Humble yourselves before the Lord, and he will lift you up. Amen.
And now we have, we are going to invite our Reverend, Reverend Tonga, to come and receive our wrist coin from Susan and then introduce our Reverend Eunice. Welcome, my Reverend. This is the list coin from the Women's Guild of Nairobi West Parish. And we thank God to receive what has been given for the purposes of furthering God's kingdom through the laid down procedures. I would request that uh, we stand and pray for the same. Gracious Father, your people have never been short of anything you have given them to say thank you. Here is the list coin for the year 2020 by the members of the Umas Guild with the purpose of using the same to further your kingdom. What we seek is your blessing, Lord. Blessing for your, the members, your servants, who have known why they give the Easter coin and where it goes every year to support the people who need it most. We thank you because of them and seek the Lord in your grace you may visit them and bless them. And whoever will receive this support, may they glorify your holy name. For us and for those who will be served, all of us give glory to your holy name, and we are all of us seeking your blessing and your approval and acceptance. Our prayer to you through Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior. Amen. Amen. You be seated. Make sure it is used properly. We have prayed for it. We have blessed it. Use it to the glory and honor of God Almighty. Wherever you have a purpose to, uh, according to your program, Go and do it, and may the Lord bless you. Amen. Amen. Members, viewers, and all of us, we thank God for this special method of communication. I was imagining yesterday that these messages, we used to hear them when seated, and even if you did not get something, that was all. Today, you can repeat the same message as many times as you want. So even when we see as if we are being blessed, we still thank God it has its advantage. You can also send your message to very many people, friends, share it so that they can hear what the Lord is saying. Friends, I am saved this morning. Jesus Christ is my Lord and Savior. And I'm delighted to be here this Sunday, the Women's Guild Sunday. They asked me to uh, that they have invited a guest and they invite them, the guest for them. Thank you for in, uh, accepting to the invitation for the Women's Guild. Thank you for being with us, Reverend Eunice Jerry Moiro. Uh, Reverend Eunice Jerry Moiro, I met her one time when she was a, a teacher at Mangu High School. And later, we served it together when she was the regional guild, organ guild organizer of Central Region. Today, she is the religious and occasional secretary of our region, Nairobi region. So she is at home. She is home. Though she will tell us more about herself, we invite her today, being the 2020 Women's Guild Sunday, that she may deliver the message the Lord has sent her with based on the theme that is governing the Presbyterian Church of East African Women's Guild all over. May the Lord bless you. Welcome, Eunice. My name is Festus Gitonga. Jesus Christ is my Lord and Savior again, the parish minister, PCA Nairobi West. Please welcome and share the word. Praise God. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Reverend Festa Zagetonga, uh, for this opportunity. 
I thank God too for the opportunity that he has given me to come and share together with you. And so I want to take this opportunity to greet all of us, the few who are here with us, and the many others out there who are watching us online. Uh, I greet you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Uh, like it has been well put, my name is Eunice Njeri Moiro. I am saved of God. I am a witness. And this morning I'm delighted to be in your presence as we minister together and share the word of God. I am happy uh, that Nairobi uh, region, Nairobi West Parish has found it uh, necessary and worth uh, inviting me that we be together. So thank you so much. So before I pray for the word, maybe I would also add uh, something small on my introduction. And I would want to say that I am a wife to one husband uh, by the name Elder Samuel Moiro Gedongo. We are blessed together with the three children, two daughters and a son, all in their teenage years. And above all, we are happy to be in the presence of the Lord. I stay at Juja. My presbytery is Terereka. My parish is Kalimoni Parish. And my congregation is PCEA Kenya Tarot. And so today I am happy. Shall we pray together? God Almighty, we come before thy awesome presence this morning with thanksgiving in our hearts. We want to thank you for who you are in our lives. We want to thank you for your faithfulness upon our lives. Thank you for this great day that you have given us. Thank you for the gift of life. Thank you for the opportunity to serve you. We honor you and we glorify thy holy name. My Father and my God, this morning as I minister your word, how I pray that the meditations of my heart and the utterances of my mouth will be acceptable before thee. Use me all for your glory. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Yeah, so thank you so much. I'm delighted of the theme that we've been given this year of the Women's Guild. So wherever members of the Women's Guild you are watching from, and indeed all members of our parish, and indeed the entire PCA, uh, we again, once again, welcome you uh, to this great Sunday, the Women's Guild Sunday. So our theme is uh, forget not the Lord your God. And so whatever sermon I'm giving, I'm basing it on that theme. Just a, a flashback on the book of Deuteronomy, from where our theme is coming from, Deuteronomy 8, 11 to 11. So you find that Deuteronomy is a final book in the Pentateuch or the Torah. These are the law books that are believed to have been written by Moses. And we say that Deuteronomy is a second law. And how is it the second law? It is a retelling by Moses of the teachings and the events of the Exodus, the Leviticus, and the book of Numbers. And so we see that it includes so much of what has been spoken earlier alone. It also includes a review of the Ten Commandments that we are given by Moses in chapter 20 of the book of Exodus. So when you go to Deuteronomy chapter 5, you get the Ten Commandments uh, written again. We also see that it is a song and a call of love, a call to obedience to God. There are blessings that have been stipulated in the book of Deuteronomy, and there are curses. So when we obey God, we get blessings. When we are disobedient to God, there are all curses. So our unfaithfulness can lead to curses. And that is well written in Deuteronomy 28. And indeed you find that the whole Deuteronomy is a set of sermons, many, many sermons put together. Moses is trying to call the Israelites back to God. He's calling them to obedience that God requires their obedience. If they are to partake, if they are to receive the gifts that were promised to Abraham. Remember there was a promise about the promised land that if these people will adhere 
to whatever God wanted of them, then God would bless them with a land that was so blessed. And so uh, Moses is reminding them that they have to be obedient to God so that they may receive that land. And so as we are reading in chapter 11, we find that the children of Israel are already at the Jordan River, awaiting to cross over to the promised land. And so Moses sits them down and gives them a solemn warning. And so that solemn warning is what we are seeing in this chapter. And so Moses is reminding them that the land that they are just about to inherit is undeserved. They are not getting it because they deserved it. Not that they had done very good things to God. Not that they had pleased him. No, it was an undeserved favor from God. And then secondly, he's telling them that the land that you're just about to get into is so blessed. It is filled with milk. It is filled with honey. It is a fertile land. When you cultivate that land, you are going to be blessed by so much. And so he's cautioning them and he's telling them, when you get into that beautiful land, when you get into that land that is endowed with so much, be careful that you do not forget your God. And so that is you know, from verses 11 uh, that our reader has led. And so I want to point out three key things that are coming out very clearly from the scripture. And the first one is, Moses is telling them, do not forget. So do not forget your God. And he's using the wording, take care. And so I want us to think about forgetting. What is to forget? To forget is to ignore. To forget is to stop caring about something. Something or somebody that mattered to you at some point in time. You no longer care about that person. You no longer care about that thing. You no longer remember that thing. And so God, uh, Moses is telling them, do not forget. Take care that you do not forget. Ladies, I want you to remember of the many things that you have had in life. You've been endowed with so many clothing, a beautiful and fashionable clothing. And I want you to remember a time when you have a dress right now locked up in your cabinet that you no longer value. But when you bought it, at some point it was so valuable to you. Wherever you went, you wanted to put on that dress because it was valuable to you. But a time came when you no longer valued it and so it is just stuck inside somewhere. Even our men, think of them, they have beautiful vehicles, old vehicles, old machines that they valued so much at some point in time. But a time came again, and they bought others, and they forgot the old ones. And so you find that there are times that you may get something that you value so much, but with time, when you get into other things, you tend to forget that old one. Even relationships. There are people who you valued so much in the past, and probably... Because of one, two, three things, you no longer value them. And so it's the same thing that the children of Israel found themselves in. They left a land. They were in the wilderness. Getting, uh, they were so troubled. And of course, from wherever they had come from, they had trouble. And then they were getting into a land that was so endowed. And so they are being told, when you get into this land, remember there is God who was taking care of you in the wilderness. Hallelujah. And so you are being reminded, do not forget your God. And so we may ask, what are these things that they were to remember about their God? Because whenever you remember about something, you also remember how it was helping you. You remember the attributes of that thing. And so what is it that you are not to forget about their God? There are several things that have been mentioned in our scripture. And indeed, if you started from verses 1, you'd note several things because Moses is kind of taking back to them to their history. And so he's telling them, number one, remember, this God delivered you. He delivered you from the land of bondage, that is Egypt. And so remember, you were slaves there. You had no freedom. 
You could not do what you wanted because you are slaves. So do not forget God because he set you free and he delivered you from bondage. Number two, he's telling them this God protected you. So do not forget this God because he protected you. So remember, these children in the wilderness, they were surrounded by many snakes, scorpions, the serpents, and sometimes they could be beaten. But God protected them. When they got sick, he healed them. Not that their feet, the Bible says, did not even swell. And so you can see the protection that God gave the children of Israel. Surely, they were not to forget their God. Number three, they were not to forget that this same God provided for them. Remember the instances when they had no food and when they cried out unto God, he provided manna, he provided quails, and they ate and they were fed. When they got thirsty, this same God provided water from a rock. And so why should they forget God? And they, again, this same God made sure that their clothing did not wear out. And so Moses is telling them, if this God was too careful to take care of you, then why should you forget him? And then number four, he's telling them, do not forget about this God because he's a, he has a purpose for you. He has a good purpose for you. He has an intent for you people. And his intent is to purify you that when you get into this land, you will be humbled. And when you are humbled, you will be able to connect with your God. Hallelujah. And so similarly today, I would want us to reflect and think of our desert situations. Think of the wildernesses that we have been passing through. We have passed through so much as individuals. We have passed through so much as families. And indeed, even as a nation. There is no person who would say has not had a desert situation. Others are many blessings that God has blessed us with. And for that reason, we should not forget God. Just take a moment and reflect back in your life. Think of what God has done for you. Think of the favors that God has bestowed upon you. Remember when you are born, for example, my sister, my brother, Many other children were born together with you. But at some point in time, maybe they left, they are no longer there. But God has secured you. You are still there, you are still alive, you are happy, and you are at peace. Do not forget the Lord, you are God. My brother, my sister, just remember when you were born, God gave you parents. All gave you a guardian to take care of you. Remember, there are many who were born together with you again, who never lived to see the light of day because maybe they were thrown away. And maybe others who survived like you, they never got people to take care of them. God blessed you with parents who cared and nurtured you up to where you are today. And so remember, it is all about God it is not about you. Hallelujah. So do not forget the Lord. You are God. Look at yourself. You went to school. You had education to the level that you desired. Many others went to school with you, but probably at some point they dropped out. They could not proceed because of different problems. But God made sure that you got educated. And it's not because those who do not get educated are hated by God. No, God has got plans for each one of us. Hallelujah. And so note the very many things that God has done to you. God gave you families. God gave you children. There are many women out there who have no children and they would desire to have. And it's not that God hates them, but he has a plan for them. God says, I have a good plan for each one of you. Hallelujah. And so when you think of that, remember your God. Do not forget your God. You got a job, you got into businesses, and they are doing well. Others have started businesses. They have collapsed. Just thank God, do not forget your God. And so they were told, do not forget your God for all the good things he has done unto you. 
my brother, my sister, do not forget the Lord because of the many good things he has done for you and the many other good things that he has in store for you. Hallelujah. And then number two, Moses is telling these people that they should be careful. So remember, the first one is take care. The second one is be careful. It's a further warning. Be careful. So if you read verse 17, it says, Be careful, lest you say in your heart, My power and the might and my might have gotten me this wealth. So note that the Israelites were to be blessed because of God's mercies, because of God's love for them, because of the promises that God has given prior to Abraham. And so Moses is reminding them that when they get there, number one, they will have a lot to eat. And so when they have eaten and they are full, when they have built good houses and they live in them, like the ones we are living in, when they have herds of flocks, sheep and goats, and this could be the property that we are also having, and when we have all the silver and the gold, all that we count on, all that we care for, all the many blessings that we have, God is telling us through Moses that we should be careful that we do not forget our God. Hallelujah. And so remember, why was he telling them this? It is because the moment people, human beings, get endowed, get blessed with so much, there is a tendency to develop some element of pride. And so he's telling these people, do not be proud, but remember, whatever you have is God-given. Hallelujah. And so therefore, my brother and my sister, can you just look at what you have? Look at the many blessings that God has given you. Look at your canon. Look at your promised land. It is full of so much. God has given you profitable businesses. Others are struggling, but God has chosen you and has given you, has blessed you. You started a business. You found it, and God blessed it. And now, Nibia Sharambayo in Anawiri. Hallelujah. And so God is telling you, take care that you do not forget me. Do not just see that business. But remember, it is I, your God, who gave it to you. Hallelujah. And then again, remember the good jobs and the good careers that we are having, they are God given. It is not about your education. It is not about your knowledge. It is not about whom you know, but it's about the favor of God. So when you are in a good career, when you are in a good job, when you are in a good business, take care. Be careful that you do not forget your God. Look at the wealth. Look at the health. God has given you good health, my sister. My brother, you are in good health. Remember, it's all about God. It is not that I and you know how to take good care of ourselves. It is not that, for example, these times of the COVID-19, it is not because we are taking better care of ourselves than the others, but it is because God has chosen to take care of you. Hallelujah. And so, be careful that you do not forget it is about God. And so, remember the positions of power. Remember the property. Remember the disciplined children that you have. It is not that you and I know how to command or to bring up or to nurture so well, but it's all about God. Hallelujah. And so, be careful that you do not forget about God. We are reminded when we have so much, when we have all the blessings, that we desire, when we have all the education that we desire, when we have very good children like anybody would want to have, when we have all the good businesses, let us not say that it is through the might of our hands. It is not about the power. It is not about the knowledge. It is not about the abilities, but it's all about God. Hallelujah. By the way, do you know there are many people out there who may have better education than us, but maybe they are not well positioned as you are, as we are. So remember, it is not about your knowledge. 
When you think about whatever you have at your home or wherever you are stationed, you may be having so much, but remember, it is not because you work so hard. Sio kwa mkono wako, lakini ni kwa mkono wa Bwana. And so do not say to yourself, my power and my might has gotten this world. It is not about you. But it is God who has blessed the little that you have done and he has expanded it. Hallelujah. And so when others see, they see you as a powerful person. They see you as a wealthy person. But it's all because of the blessings of God. Remember, it is God who gives us the power and the ability to engage in the economic production. And so without that, we would not produce anything. Without God, we would not even be educated. Without God, we would not nurture our children. And so it all boils down to God. Remember that God is our benefactor. It is him who benefits us in everything. Whatever benefit that you're enjoying today is all about God. And so anytime, my sister, my brother, when you see a blessing that you have, first see the blesser. Wherever there is a blessing, there is a blesser. Hallelujah. And so let us not just see the blessings like the children of Israel did. They saw the fertile lands. They saw the many heads of cattle and sheep. They saw the land that was flowing with milk and honey, and they forgot their God. And so let us be careful that we do not forget our God. The blessings we have, we should not count them as an, ent as an entitlement. We are not entitled, but it is a favor from God. And so the number three, Moses is telling them, but remember you are God. And so verses 18 tells, says, but you shall remember the Lord your God. And so I want to put it this way, anything that you do not forget, you will always remember. Hallelujah. And so always remember your God. And there is a warning that is being sounded. That if you do not remember the Lord your God, you are going to perish like all the other nations did before you. And so it is not for us to perish. It is not for you as an individual to perish. It is not for your family to perish because you will choose to remember your God. You will choose to attribute whatever benefits you have unto your God. So what are the problems? What are the consequences of forgetting God? I just want us to look at a few consequences of forgetting God. Number one, when we forget God, we get stuck in our wildernesses. So when the children of Israel forgot God, actually they got stuck in the wilderness for 40 years. And they kept wandering. And so even us today, we are being reminded there is a consequence that if we forget God, we will also be stuck in our wilderness. We will keep moving in circles. We move in circles around and around. We will even lose our direction. And so it is good to remember our God so that we do not lose the direction. We do not lose our focus. We have a focus. Our focus should be on Jesus Christ. Hebrews 12 is telling us, fix your eyes on Jesus, who is the author and perfecter of your faith. Hallelujah. And so when we forget our God, when we no longer remember our God, when we are surrounded with so much and we see that without seeing who has given it to us, we will get stuck in our wilderness. Forbid it, Lord, that it could be we are getting stuck in the issue of the coronavirus because we are only thinking of the sciences that will come and secure us. We are thinking of the medicine that is being researched on. We are thinking of the vaccinations that are being researched on. May we continue, dear sisters, like we have been doing, focusing on God the more. Science has got its part and God has a major part. Hallelujah. And so we will not get stuck. God is removing us from this coronavirus. The second consequence is that it leads to unbelief and rebellion. When we forget our God, when we do not remember our God, we, it, we, we, we will be rebellious. And so note what happened to the children of Israel. They forgot the many miracles. 
that God had done unto them. And because of that, they even started grumbling and they started complaining. And this led to their rebellion. And indeed, if you look back, they even wanted to go back to Egypt. And even at a later point in time, they demanded for a king, an earthly king that they could see. So you can see this kind of rebellion. I don't know where me and you, we could have rebelled against God. Are there times that we prioritize our will to the will of God? That things, I want them to go my way and not the godly way? Do we grumble? Do we complain? For example, have we complained about the pandemic that we are, we are going through? Possibly you and I have complained. Possibly you and I have asked, where is God in this? Possibly we have asked, God, have you rejected us? Like Romans 11 says, and it answers, no, God has not rejected his people. Have we questioned God? And so note that when we do not remember God, when we do not give God his place, there is a tendency to rebel against him. Number three, it leads, forgetting leads to foolish actions. And so note, when Moses went up the, uh, the mountain to collect the stone tablets, we see the Israelites becoming impatient. And because of this impatience, they decided to make a golden calf, a calf that would not have helped them. A calf that was made of gold and silver. It could not speak to them. It could not give them direction. But they opted to make a calf because they forgot their God and so they became foolish. When we rebel against God, when we forget our God, we tend to do foolish things. Have we in times gotten impatient with God and even with each other? Mama at home, have you gotten impatient sometimes with your husband, with your children, and found yourself doing things that later you regret? And even our husbands, do we do that? So may God remember us. Then again, we see it leads to forgetting. And it may, lead, it may lead to pride. Forgetting may lead to pride. And these people are being told, do not be proud and forget it's about God. And then again, number five, forgetting leads to God's wrath. And that's why in verses 19, it is saying, I solemnly warn you today that you shall surely perish like the other nations before you if you forget God. And so even as today we are being warned, if we do not take care, if we are not careful, if we do not remember our God, we are surely going to perish. We thank God because as we are called by his name and we seek the Lord in all ways. Psalm 106 verse 21 to 23 says, when the Israelites forgot God who had done great things for them, he said he would destroy them. And it's only that Moses pleaded and God relented. And so we should be careful that we do not ignite God's anger upon us. So continuing, when you look at the book of James, it has two issues that it is tackling that are well connected with what I've been talking about. The first one is about worldliness. It's talking about worldliness. So remember James was a brother to Jesus, a half-brother to Jesus, and indeed the leader of the Jerusalem church. And so he's talking about the issues that entangle us, the issues that make us not do the will of God. The first one is we are full of the world, too much full of the world. And this word results to selfishness. When we become selfish, we know that selfishness leads to sin. And we know that selfish people seek after their own desires. They want to fulfill, to gratify their own selves. And so this selfishness or this worldliness will result in the things that have been mentioned. It will result to quarrels and conflicts. Some of the conflicts may be internal. You have internal conflicts within you. 
And when you have the internal conflicts within you, they will be exemplified on the outside. And so you get to the other people. The other one is that because of our worldliness, when we pray, we do selfish prayers. And God is not happy with some of the prayers that we do. And that's why the Bible says they go unanswered. And why do they go unanswered? Number one is because when we ask, of the, uh, when we pray, we do not do it in faith. Remember, faith in God is a paramount. We must have our faith in God if we want to meet Him. If we want to connect with our God, it has to be through faith. And then, when asking or when praying, the Bible is saying that we do it with wrong motives. Maybe sometimes I want to be blessed with a car so that people can be seeing me with a car. They want me, I want to be blessed with a good dress so that I can be proud when I am with the other women. And so the motives that we ask God with are the ones that make us not get blessed. And even sometimes we ask in a complaining style. Maybe like this time. We've been really praying and really praying. But when we are asking in a uh, complaining style, our prayers become bitter and resentful in the ears of God. And so he does not hearken to those prayers. And so we must teach ourselves to leave so much worldliness in us that we may adopt the godliness that he's talking about. And so when we talk of the second one, the godliness, it is about submitting to God. We must be in submission to the will of God. And a submission will give the results again that have been mentioned there. That is, we will receive the grace of God and receive it in abundance. The Bible says that my grace will be sufficient for you. Number two, we will defeat the devil and we'll have a victory over him. And so the devil will be at our feet. We will trample over him. He has no power. He has no stronghold in our lives. And of course, we get closer to God. If you read verse 8, it talks about closeness uh, to God. When you are close to somebody, then you have the liberty, you have the ability to tell him or her that which you want. And so when we submit to God, then God will be close to us. We will be close to God and we can tell him what we want. And of course, God will exalt us because when you submit, there is humility. That element of humility is what God requires. The Bible says, humble yourself and God will lift you up. And so we get to the point of being exalted by God. And so my dear brothers and sisters, always remember when you are at peace with God in your heart, you don't have to fight others. But you seek dialogue and understanding. Hallelujah. And so when we have God in our lives, when there's a lot of godliness in us, when we are in full submission, then we will seek more dialogue, we will seek more understanding than a fighting. And so the question will not come, why do you fight? Because there will be no battles to be fought. Remember that without God, my brothers, my sisters, we are helpless. We cannot help ourselves. The children of Israel could not have helped themselves. It was only God who could have helped them. Similarly, even us today, without God, we cannot help ourselves. When we remember God, our undertakings will succeed. Whatever you aspire to do, God will help you. And of course, it's always good to assume an attitude of gratitude. The children of Israel assumed an attitude of pride. And that is why they got punished at a later point in time. That is why they are forgetting God when they are seeing all the many riches. But today we are being told, assume an attitude of gratitude that God may exalt you. Hallelujah. And then finally, let us remember that what we have, what we are, what we yearn for, and even we ourselves, we all belong to God. Hallelujah. And so when we remember that, we will be in full submission to the will of God. 
When we remember that, we will remove the worldliness from us that it does not entangle us. When we remember that, we will take care not to forget the Lord our God. When we remember that again, we will be careful to remember our God. And finally, we will be in full remembrance of our God in all our endeavors. So may God help us even as we continue focusing on him and remembering him that he may walk this journey together with us. And particularly during these COVID-19 times, may God help us that we pray and we do not complain. The prayers we render to him are not complaining prayers. That we do not complain against our government. That we are here to all the directives that we have been given without complaining. Because again, the Bible says that God hates a complaining heart. Shall we pray? Gracious Father, we thank you and we honor thee. We uplift thy holy name and we accord you all the glory. Thank you for your word, dear Lord, that is reminding us not to forget you. How we pray that you may help us to take care. How we pray that you may help us to be more careful. And that, Lord, we may remember you. Remove the worldliness in us, dear Father, that we may be in full submission to your will. We fully submit unto thee. We surrender wholly unto thee. Forever use us for your glory. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen, amen. May God bless you. May God be with you. So, I will request uh, our Reverend Getonga to come forth that we may give the benediction together. And so, we commit you in the hands of God, him who is able to keep you, him who is able to bless you. May he bless you and keep you. May his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May his countenance be upon you and may he give you peace. As you endeavor to carry on with your activities, as you endeavor to carry on with your activities, as you walk, as you walk, as you move, as you talk, may the grace of God be sufficient unto you. In the name of the Father and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Oh!